We're sitting down with Hall of Famer Stan Musial, March 5th, 2002, here in lovely but chilly West Palm Beach, and uh, perhaps the most devastating hitter, and I think one of the most underrating hitters and players of all time. Certainly consistent, uh, certainly the best there ever was, and uh, we're just delighted to have some time with you, Stan. Thank you. Good. Um, we'll get going. You were raised right, side, right outside of Pittsburgh in a small town of Denora, and you're one of three major leaguers, I believe, from that small town. Bob Colson, turn of the century outfielder, and a guy few people think of, but Ken Griffey Jr., I guess, was born in Denora. What kind of town was that growing up for you? Well, uh, Denora was a town of about 7,500 people. It was a working town, a steel mill town, and uh, my dad worked in steel mills, and uh, it was a uh, it was a nice, friendly town, and of course, you know, I mentioned the Griffies, why uh, uh, Buddy Griffey, the grandfather, was on our high school team. And uh, so we played, uh, we played ball. He was a better football player than a baseball player, but uh, he, he did come from uh, my hometown. You were one of six kids growing up, and I understand your mom used to make baseballs for you. Yeah, we had uh, we didn't have any uh, uh, baseballs, and my mother would get uh, yarn and roll them up, and would have uh, the black tape. And my mother would always have uh, have the balls around. So my my brother and I we had uh, we had baseballs uh, or balls for as as youngsters. Speaking of your brother, I also understand that you and he used to uh, use a broomstick and try to hit bottle caps. Well, uh, that's right. We had uh, we we had some uh, bottle caps and broomsticks, and of course, my brother would pitch, you know. And you, it, with a bottle cap, you could make it move and curve and swing around. And of course, trying to hit the hit that bottle cap was was quite a feat. So I I could do it though. <laughs> so. And you also learned to use all the fields early in life because of the playing field you had as a youngster. We had a small field, and uh, and uh, we had a short right field, and we only had one ball. And if you'd hit the ball over the right fielder's head, he'd have to chase the ball and, and uh, take five minutes to pick, you know, come back. So they had a our field had a little hillside there, and we where you can keep the ball in play. And I learned how to how to hit the ball to the left field when I was a youngster. And that's a great asset in baseball is to be able to hit to the opposite field and uh, use all the field. And uh, that was one of my bi biggest assets. So you get called up in September. You, you bang out 20 hits in 12 games. You hit 426. You had six hits and one twin bill. But probably the most interesting game was when you went home to Pittsburgh for your first game in Forbes Field. Do you remember at all that game in Forbes Field? You had a big yes, my at Cardinals. We had at the end of the season. We had uh, one trip to to, to uh, Pittsburgh, and of course, all my friends and relatives were there, and I was fortunately enough, to, lucky enough to hit a home run off of, I think, Rip Sewell. It was a pitcher, and. Uh, a fella from my hometown who I knew caught the ball, <laughs> caught the ball, and it, he gave it to me after the <laughs> after he got back home again. That was uh, unusual. You had a full season in '42, and everything really came together for you in 1943, which was the first of your three MVP years. You hit 357. You led the majors in hits, doubles, triples, and won the first of your seven batting titles. Do you know, was there anything that made everything come together? Was it a comfort level, an understanding of National League pitching? Well, I start uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, after two or three years where I was, uh, I was a big league ball player and I, I had confidence, you know. The first year or two, you're not so sure about being a big league ball player, you know, and uh, of course, then after I had some couple of good seasons, I got my, got confidence and felt like I could uh, uh, play big league baseball. Last, the '46 season, uh, yes, we had a tight race with the Dodgers. We, uh, we we tied for the league league at that 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 year, and we beat them in the playoffs. And then we we're going to face the uh, 
Boston Red Sox, and uh, we had a, it was the seventh game, and you're talking, we're talking about uh, Harry Enos Slot on first base. Enos had great speed, you know, but what happened that the inning before, Don DiMaggio, who was a regular center fielder of the Dodgers, he pulled up the lane hitting a double and had to take him out of the ball game. And they uh, put a reserve center fielder in there. Well, in the eighth or ninth inning, Slaughter got a base hit and got on first base. Now he's, he was hitting and running with Harry Walker. Harry hit a, a, a ball not too far in left center. And uh, Slaughter was speeding around, and I think our coach even g gave him the stop sign at third. And Slaughter ran right by the right by the coach's son. The shirt's up from the Boston Red Sox. He caught the ball, and uh, and what happened, when he turned around, he dropped his arm, and he didn't think Slaughter was going to keep running, you know, and by the time he threw the ball, didn't have much on it. And Slaughter outran that ball the last 10 or, 10 or 15 feet, and that, that's, uh, that was winning around and a great uh, victory for the Cardinals. Your career ends and you become a successful general manager, 67. You win another uh, World Series for the Cardinals against the Red Sox. Was it, was it as sweet winning a, a championship as an executive as it is as a player? <clears throat> well, I, I enjoyed being a baseball player better than, the, than the, being the, the general manager. Uh, you got to have the right makeup to be a general manager. You know, uh, I guess I might might have took, taken my job too seriously. I was fighting every game, you know. I was uh, hoping the cars would win, you know. And I didn't, I wasn't relaxed as a general manager. So after after one year, why uh, I, I uh, told uh, Mr. Bush that I I, I think I'm going to give it up because I was trying to run my operations, my restaurant, and my building out. I had hotels and uh, I was trying to take care of baseball, take care of my business. So I couldn't do uh, both, so I told my you know, I'm going to step down. And we had a great year with Red Chaney as a manager. We, we won another World Series against the Red Sox. Uh, Sorry about this Boston fans, <laughs> but uh, hopefully they'll win one of these days. <laughs> Your first year of eligibility in 1969, the Hall of Fame calls, and along with Roy Campanella, Stan Kovaleski, and Wade Hoyt, you are elected. And were you at all surprised with your early election? Well, uh, I had a great career in baseball, and uh, of course, uh, there was quite a few fellows at that time getting in on the first ballot, and of course, of course, I was surprised that sometimes uh, a lot of the great ball players weren't getting in on the first uh, go arounds. Like Joe Maggio, one of the great ball players of, of our century, you know, uh, Joe didn't get in the first year or two, and and of course, uh, I was fortunate to be able to get enough votes to get in, and I'm thankful about that. Danny became the first ML player ever to win three MVPs. You slugged 700 in the season once. You passed Ty Cobb for the all-time records for total bases. You broke Ruth Smart for extra bases. You earned seven batting titles. The records go on and on. If, if you had to pick a couple, which would you think are the most special for you personally? Well, I, I would say, uh, of course, my, I'm very proud of my seven batting titles, you know. I, uh, you know, you have to be having good seasons uh, to win any time you win a batting title. But uh, overall, I think getting 3,000 hit was a magical number in baseball. And to, you know, to get 3,000 hits, that's, you're averaging 200 hits for 15 years. <laughs> now that takes a lot of playing, a lot of hitting, and it's a great number, 3,000, but I think what, what I appreciate more than anything else was getting voted into the Hall of Fame because uh, you're, you're, you're up there with some of the great athletes and baseball players of this country, of this century, so I was very uh, happy about that. I guess getting in the Hall of Fame was the greatest uh, 
thing in baseball.